young specialty has grown over time. There's an increasing need for people to gain knowledge and especially technical know-how in order to complete these types of interventions. Although there are large meetings where the subject matter is dealt with, the intimate setting where we have a true field of international experts where doctors can interact with them on a very personal level uh, to share stories, insights, etc., we consider to be an extremely important part of this meeting. It's a very fast-paced field where you need to be at the forefront of all the information and unfortunately there's so much information coming out with respect to new technologies, novel applications, how to perform the procedure and it's 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 fine to read it in a textbook but uh, ultimately you have to perform the procedure and for that uh, you need training, uh, you need a, a comfort level. We're dealing with sicker patients, potentially, sometimes because our population is getting older. Sometimes a lot of these patients in congenital heart disease have had a you know, number of procedures when they were children, and um, they're you know, obviously a high-risk candidate for any type of redo open-heart surgery. So you know, the, the obvious question is, is there uh, a less invasive, less invasive technique to fix the problem? And, and we have to consider the risk of the procedure. Along, along with the risk of having another open heart surgery, along with the risk of not doing anything, and and that's become more more prevalent, more common in my practice. You know, when I started doing this, we started by doing cases that I felt that I could do, and then after a certain amount of years, you know, you increase your complexity, you take on bigger and bigger interventions. Our situation happens to be rather unique in that we have a very very large referral population. Uh, to deal with. Uh, I think in other centers it may be a little bit harder to do that because especially in the United States there's a lot of centers doing a lot of different things and I think volume is a hard thing to come by. We may have a case that I do that I won't see for two or three years again. Uh, so it is difficult to you know gain expertise in these fields and that's the whole point of bringing everyone together um, in an intimate setting. The benefit for the attendees is really to have the ability to interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis, to have a very intimate discussion about how to do things, how to do things safely, and what they're actually doing in their own centers. It's a tremendous opportunity really for uh, a young interventionist or someone who's just starting in the field. There's going to be things on percutaneous aortic valves, percutaneous mitral valve repair using mitral clip, novel technologies like percutaneous tricuspid valve repair, transcatheter mitral valve replacement, and then a whole bunch of other topics like percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation, coarctation stenting, complex atrial septal defects. There's so many new technologies available for patients and also, you know, we're trying to become more creative in treating patients with devices and technologies that were not necessarily meant uh, for that uh, type of problem. For instance, you know, we may have a device that was meant for a specific cardiac lesion, but we're putting it in, in a totally different place because we we think we can, you know, we think we can fix the problem, uh, but not necessarily with a uh, technology that's meant for it. All of us have a real interest in actually uh, teaching other people how to do things safely and 
choosing the right patient. And I think we have a real passion for communicating that information to people and to trying, trying to help other people get started. We all benefited from mentorship um, during our careers. And I think providing mentorship to people is really a key part of making our, our little area of medicine safer um, and more effective.